Hey, what's up, Chance and Chase? Rebel Greaser here, and we're back with a new video. Got me a new newsboy cap. This one fits a little tighter, like I said it would. So, got another one from Locks. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Also, another product from Locks. Now, this is called a uh, Gulen Combi Beard Oil. I believe that's how you say it. Pardon me, Locks, if I didn't pronounce it right. Now, as most of you can see, I don't have a beard. I did. Way back in last October, boy, did I have a beard. More scruff than anything else, but you know, whatever. This stuff here is uh, Citrus Crisp. That's the scent. Now, you don't have to use this as beard oil. We've got a little dropper here. It smells really good. Um, you can actually use this as a hair oil or beard oil. They do. Or you can even use it as an aftershave. They do as well. So, I got this. I think it's a little cool little rooster design there. I think that's kind of awesome. They have other ones that are out now. So, you know, if you guys have got a big old thick beard and want to get it oiled up, you know, so it feels nice and good. Or you guys want to put some hair oil in your hair. You know, switch it up a little bit. Or if you have, you know, a baby face, you know, your face hurts after shaving, like mine does, sensitive skin and whatnot, throw this on there. If this doesn't work, I guarantee Baron Bayonet Butter will. I'll use that, but that's what we got. Also, now for those of you who know, I had that pipe in the other video. The damn thing does not work. I think it's the material, all that plastic, and I mean, as pretty as it is, that's a freaking damn decorative piece for your desk or something. That's, I mean, you can use it to smoke if you want to, guys, but it just was not working. So, what I did is I went back on Amazon and I found a, a company under the name. Dr. Watson. Now, for those of you who don't know who Dr. Watson is, I will give you a short explanation. For those of you who know and have read or have watched these Sherlock Holmes novels or have heard the old Sherlock Holmes radio show like I have, you will know that Dr. Watson is Sherlock Holmes' partner. You probably heard the uh, term, you know, Holmes, you never cease to amaze me. Then you hear Haunt the Dr. You know, Dr. Watson say that. Then you'll hear Sherlock Holmes say, animation about the Watson Elementary. Now, now, for those of you know, who know that Sherlock Holmes smoked a big curved pipe. That was his thing. Well, we got three pipes. We're only going to show one. They're, all the, they're not all the same. They're all in different. There's a rosewood and walnut and oak, I believe. I believe this is the oak right here. A good old wooden pipe. This thing... Better, a lot better. Yeah. But anyways, I come on and show you guys all this stuff. Also, for those of you who like. Uh, different kinds of sodas. I found a new kind today I never had before. Maybe you guys have had this before. I found this stuff um, called Mountain Dew Maui Blast. This is um, a lot different. Uh, I'm not a big on anything pineapple flavor, but this. It's got other natural flavors in it too, as well as being Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew has come out with a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot. But, you know. So, this stuff that I've got in here, I don't smoke tobacco, so this uh, stuff that I'm using doesn't always stay lit all the time. 
You know that these pipes are really good. You can even get a good old corn cow pipe. Like what Huck Finn had in little Mark Twain's novels if you like. I prefer this. Boxman, huh? <laughs> anyway, that's that. So, also something else to show you guys. Um, I had a little Johnny Tash shirt that, um, unfortunately, my dogs got hold of and put holes in it. And I don't really have very good cutting skills. I put this up yesterday. Johnny Tash. The man in black. Also got this today. Put my ashes in. Pictures of Marilyn Monroe. I'll tat it up. Put your ashes on there. Push it down. All goes into there. When you're done, open it up, empty it out. In fact, I'll be trying that a little bit later. Probably after this video. And that's it guys, just a few things from locks, and a few things for your personal self, and whatnot. As I said, May 7th is coming up right around the corner guys, so you know, if you, you know, you cats and chicks want to see your truly be getting married, let me know. Or if you can make it up to Tennessee and don't cause no trouble, you're welcome to come as well. You know. Um... I'd also like to um, say, um, common question that I've been seeing lately brought up within the community, and this was a few years ago, but I thought I would I would cover it one more time just because it should be. Um, I hear a lot of people say, is there a difference between the rockabilly and the psychobilly subculture? I'm going to say yes. You see, the rockabilly subculture, rockabilly is a mix of rock and roll and hillbilly music that was one of the earliest forms of what was coined the term for rock and roll. Whereas psychobilly is more the psychedelic rock of like the 60s and 70s. Um, the Beatles started out with them Beatle haircuts and, you know, rock and, rock and roll music, you know, from, you know, coming over from, uh, England, you know, Liverpool and whatnot. However, they transformed into psychobilly when the hippie era came along, as psychedelic, you know, little yellow submarine and whatnot. So, psychobilly and rockabilly do dress with some of the same styles, such as, you know, like, you know, you know, boots and, you know, leather, you know, vest and jackets, you know. So, the, so some of the dressing style is similar, whereas the music is different, and so is the way that they promote out their stuff. Not all psychobillies are drug users, don't get me wrong, but a lot of drugs were involved in the psychobilly community in the psychedelic rock area, especially for those of you who know about Woodstock, there was a lot of drugs going on there. I mean, you know, you got a bunch of hippies that didn't shower for three flipping days and did nothing but take drugs, sleep, shit and piss, and listen to bands for three straight days. That's just really nasty. And, you know, especially with the long hair and all greasy and... As funny as it sounds, and I would have liked to have been there, I don't think I would have stayed three whole days. I probably would have stayed one day and then went home. However, be that as it may, here's a little history for you. Who were the first people to coin the term rockabilly? Well, I'm going to tell you. And it's just show, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash did a lot of hillbilly. Elvis Presley was Mr. Rock and Roll, the king, you know? Well, Johnny 
Cash called Elvis Presley and said, I have an idea. What if we put hillbilly music with rock and roll together? Elvis said, that sounds great. But, Johnny Cash said, what would we call it? Elvis said, I've got something to do. Give me an hour, I'll call you back. He called him back in actually two hours. And he called him back and he said, what about rockabilly? That's where the term coined rockabilly came from. Now, where psychobilly came from, I don't know. That probably originated in the 60s among the hippie subculture, would be my guess. But um, I want to give a shout out to my boy up in Michigan, Dave, a.k.a. Kelso, for that. He taught me about that little Johnny Cash Elvis thing, so shout out to that. That's, I, I think that's pretty cool, you know. Um, but yes, despite some of the dress being sort of similar to, you know, the greasers and all, there, there is a big demographic that really differentiates us. Now, I listen to psychobilly music myself. I like psychobilly music, you know. Um, I listen to rockabilly. I listen to typical rock and roll. I listen to doo-wop. I listen to some hip-hop. I listen to country. I listen to some Spanish music. I listen to some Italian music. Um, I listen to some... You know, alternative, you know. I don't listen to opera. I don't listen to you know, classical, classic rock. Yeah, but not that classical, you know. I, I mean, I like Beethoven and Bach, don't get me wrong. You know, I think I think their music is cool, but it's not. I like music that has lyrics, that has, like, you know, a, a story sort of to tell, you know, or has a fun beat. Like, um, like, like, like some songs, lyrics... Are kind of out there, like uh, "Run Around Sue" by Dion the Belmonts. That story, you know, you know my story. Sad but true about a girl that I once knew. She took my love and then ran around with every other guy in town. You know, that's like a really bad story to be telling. But uh, the beat, you know, you, you know, starts out, dun, 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 you know, or uh, you know, other songs that just have a fun beat to start with, like "The Wanderer." You know that, dun, 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 you know. You know, but, um, it's also by Dion the Belmonts. Or, uh, our songs have a cute tune, like, uh, My Dingling by Chuck Berry. It sounds so wrong with the way he talks about it, but it's really just a little bell, you know, on the string, his little dingling. It's, <laughs> when it first came out, people were like, what the hell is he talking about? But, um, you know, those type of songs, you know, or, you know, I Got a Woman Way Uptown by Ray Charles, you know, that's, uh, I guess those lyrics aren't so bad, but it makes her seem like she might be dismissive, you know, give me money, what I would need, you know, that kind of thing. In fact, actually, Ray Charles spoke about a woman that he knew that was like that, who would give him whatever the print he wanted. He felt bad because he was blind, but, uh, that was in the old, now, for, don't forget, that's in the National Enquirer magazine, so who knows what the hell that's true. But uh, sometimes the National Enquirer will tell you the truth. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, if I, if anything uh, more interesting comes in over the time, um, I'll, I'll, I'll feature it. You know, I always do. You know, whatever, whatever comes in from Lost is featured. Or if I get anything new that I think is cool that should be featured on the channel, I will. But that's that's down that's that's down the line for you know whatnot. Anyways, that's that's it for now. Um, yeah. So you know, you know it's coming up May seventh and all. And uh, like I said, you know, if you got any questions or ideas for videos, drop them down in the comments. I check uh, every time you guys leave a comment, I see it, and I always check my comments. You know, yeah. If anybody new that sees my channel and thinks I'm cool and wants to subscribe, go ahead, you know, give me thanks for it. Um, if you subscribe to my channel, you will receive a shout out in my next video. I want to give a shout out to my boy Jay Rodriguez for subscribing. I'm sorry I didn't get to it the last videos, bro. Um, I was trying to keep them short and sweet, but uh, I want to thank you for subscribing. I want to give a shout out to my fiance who's busy working to make this wedding beautiful. I want to give a shout out to Elder and Sister Smith for all their help. Um, without you two, this probably would not be happening. Um, I want to 
want to give a shout out to my boy Ben. I seen your new videos, bro. They're pretty cool. I like that. I like the content you're out there. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, in the words from Locks, stay sharp, stay savage. To all the greaser cats and greaser chicks, you know what it is. GTFO. Grease the fuck out or get the fuck out. And as always, from yours truly. Stay greasy cats. Stay sexy chicks. Be cool. And as always, keep rocking, Billy. I'm Rebel Greaser. Over and out.